Hey YouTubers, in today's video I'm going to show you something that I found in the trash. What you're looking at right here is a constant wattage auto transformer ballast. This was found inside of an HID wall pack light like you see right over here. And the light was damaged, the glass lens was broken, so I decided to pull a few of the parts from that light. Besides salvaging this, I was also able to salvage other parts as well. The good thing about these transformers inside these HID lights, like it says, it is an auto transformer. Now I have another video explaining exactly how these work, and you can check it out right over here, circle with the I, but I am going to go over it briefly right here. Now let's take a closer look at the label, and you'll understand why in a minute. If you see any of these laying around inside light fixtures, like I just pointed out, it's always a good idea to grab these for other projects. And as you can see, it's a 400 watt rated transformer. Efficiency, 88%. Over here is the winding for the primary. And you can see it goes up to 277 volts. So if you have a 277 volt AC power supply, you would take the common wire, which is this one right here, And you would take the 277 wire, which is this one, the black, and you would connect the power supply to those wires. If you have a 120 volt power supply, you would use the common and the 120 volt. If you have a 220 or a 240 volt power supply, you would use a common and 240. So as you can see, it's just one big winding, and throughout that winding, there's taps. So if you wanted to input 120 volts into the primary, you can also take the common and the 240 volt lead right here, using only 120 volts as an input, you can get 240 volts out. You can also get 208 out, or you can get 277 volts out, only using a 120 volt supply. If you have a 240 volt supply, but you need 120 volts, then you would hook up 240, and then you would take the common and 120 volt wires and use those to power something that you need 120 volts for. So this will come in very useful if you have to go between 120 and 240, and using a transformer of this size for the metal halide lamp, I can get a few amps of current off of this winding right over here. Now, if you wanted to input 120 volts, you can also get out of that 120 volt input, you could get 88 volts. So if you went between the 120 volt winding and the 208, you would have 88 volts AC. You could rectify it, it'll be 1.4 times higher. When you rectify it with a filter cap, you can go between 208 and 240 and have a 36 volt AC output using the 240 volt wire and the 208. So we would take this wire here, that's a 208, and you would take from the other wire, which would be 240, over here. So between those two wires, you would get 36 volts AC if you were using a 120 volt supply. The same applies if you're operating on 240. So if you have a 240 volt supply, you could get over here 88 volts by using those two or you could get 36 37 volts by going between the 277 and the 240 in a minute I'll demonstrate that now the thing to keep in mind is this is not going to be isolated all of these wires right here are on the same side of the transformer this is the iron core and this is the secondary now the secondary has these three wires right here. The red is X1. X3 is the blue. And then you have the capacitor wire. There was a capacitor used in the circuit and that was used for limiting current. When we apply 120 volts to the primary side over here, what's going to happen, we're going to have a voltage output between X1, which is the top, 
and the capacitor wire, so that's your capacitor wire, and X1, this will be around 140, 150 volts, but that's going to be pretty useless to us because what we're going to be interested in is the 8.8 .8 volt AC output that you can get off of X1 and X3 and it will yield around three full amps off of this winding and it's also going to be isolated from the primary so you have the auto transformer to choose whatever voltage you would like and if you needed an isolated output you would also have the 8.8 .8 volt AC once rectified would be around 12 13 volts DC and you'll have three amps to use on these wires so these are pretty useful don't let them go in the trash keep them you should definitely be able to use this output here to charge 6 volt lead acid batteries. Now when this is connected up using the 120 volt wire and the common, it's going to draw 2 amps while open circuit. Now let me give you a couple of demonstrations. Okay, the transformer is powered up. Let me take this wire here, connect it to there, and we're going to connect it to the blue. We got 144 going out. Now we're going to go between the capacitor wire and the red. Hundred and fifty three volts. Keep in mind the current output is going to be probably around one amp on that side using the higher voltage. Now if I go between the blue and the red, right here, you can see we're right around 9 volts AC. And if you rectify that, like I said earlier, you would have a much higher voltage output in DC. Now let me connect up a light just to show you. And keep in mind, this is a 12 volt lamp drawing around 3 amps. And we're not going to run it at full brightness, but it's just to show you that there is a good amount of current there. Here we go. When you measure the voltage across here, it's right around 7.7, .7, drawing around 2.5 amps. Okay. Now let's take a look at the primary side. Okay, take the test lead here, connect it to the common wire, which is this one, common, and you can see that. Going to take the red clip and probe each one of the other wires. Remember, 120 volts going in, and now you're going to see a whole bunch of other voltages that you can grab coming off that winding. Here's a 208. 210. Now let's try 240. All right, that's this brown wire right here. Now let's try the capacitor wire because there's a wire for the capacitor that taps the winding as well. That gives you 114. That's this white wire right here. And the big one is the 277. Connect this up. And you got 280 volts coming off that 120 volt line. Now if you only wanted 36 volts AC or up to 50 volts DC once rectified, then you would grab the 277, connect that, and go to the 240, which is the brown. And you can see right there. All right. And over there, 37 volts. So it all depends where you're tapping the winding. I could do the 208 and 277. And now you have 70 volts. So these are pretty useful. And now you know why I did not want to see this being thrown away. The last thing I'm going to do is take my Milwaukee drill connect it to the 120 tap and 240 and power it up. Okay, I'm now connected up to the 120 leg 
and the 240 leg. So the power is coming in on the common and 120, but I'm going to be drawing power off the 120, 240. And then I'm going to go higher and higher, and you'll see the speed of the drill increase. Over here is the voltage output right now. And here we go, using this drill right here. Now we're going to take the 240 wire off and move it to the 277, so it's around 150 volts. All right, 158, connected to the black wire right over here, and you'll see the voltage drop a little bit. even lower voltage. Let's try that. Okay, now we're going between the 277 and 208. And there you go, 69.5. Drill will go much slower. See, we're at 89 volts between the 120 and 208. The drill should go faster. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please rate a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also, be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.